Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Discipleship Family. Today, we celebrate Sunday of the Divine Mercy. Everyone, please air cry, wave, or smile to your neighbor. We ask that you please silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate sacred liturgy. On this day that the Lord Let us open our minds and our hearts to recognize the risen Lord. Our celebrant this afternoon is Father John Peter. Everyone, please stand and join us in welcoming the Lord. So let's acknowledge our sins and prepare to celebrate this most holy Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you came to save the world. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to redeem the world. Lord have, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, innocent for all of your children. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
university, who in the very recurrence of the gospel feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp rightly and understand in what form they have been washed, in by whose spirit they have been reborn, and whose blood they have been redeemed. Who through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portion and portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them yet more than ever. Believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick into, out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the, in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail mark, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that were not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. 
Please be seated. I want to thank you and welcome you all once again to this Eucharistic celebration on the Divine Mercy Sunday. The Sunday after Easter, we are called to celebrate the mercy of God, the unconditional love of God, the everlasting mercy that Jesus poured upon the cross and He continued to show to His disciples after the resurrection. The mercy of God is the center and source of the life of Jesus. That's why when we had the year of mercy, Pope Francis declared God is God is love and mercy. And Jesus is the face of God's mercy. Right after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples and he didn't rep reprimand them or he didn't condemn them or anything. But he, he told them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Go and proclaim the Son of God, the love of God, and the mercy of God, and bring all people under the mercy of God. Because every soul needs to be saved. Every soul will be touched by moved by the divine presence of God. And so that's why on the second week of Easter, we are called to celebrate the mercy of God. In this world, the most important thing that we need to make this world a better place is love, human kindness. To make this world a better place. Every time I walk into St. Joseph Hospital, there are so many signs. One of the things that always gets my attention is there are three things that are most important in this world. Number one, human kindness. Number two, human kindness. Number three, human kindness. If we have the human kindness that comes from the heart of Jesus, this world would be a better place. This world is living in a stressful situation. War, restlessness, fear, anxiety, everywhere. In the world, in the countries, in the families, in our hearts. It is because we are not sharing the true mercy of God. And that is why it is like a wake up call. People wake up. We need to embrace the love of Jesus. Make this love of Jesus spread across and it has been abundantly poured upon us. There was so much fear in the hearts of the disciples of the death of Jesus. They were hiding from the fear of Jews. Guess what happened? They became so strong. They became so strong. They got so much fear. But when Jesus came and touched them, when Jesus said, Peace be with you, Fear went out. They became strong witnesses everywhere. And he, they were ready to face anyone they were afraid of earlier. And they were, about, they, were, they were saying to them, You killed Jesus, but God the Father raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses. And we are ready to die now. We are not going to run away. We are not going to betray. We are not going to deny. We are ready to die for him. They were just ordinary fishermen. They are not knowledgeable people. They were like, like us. Sometimes we are fearful, afraid of everything. We don't understand everything. We want to touch and feel everything. That's how they were. But when they had the divine presence of God amidst them, when they received the peace, when they received the Holy Spirit, and Jesus breathed on them, they became totally new creation. They became fearless. Nobody can touch them. Nobody could touch them. And they were about to say to the people that told them, Stop! Don't say the name of Jesus. You know what they would say? Whom do you want to be obedient? To God who raised Jesus from the dead? Or to you guys who put him to death? You guys are in trouble. Jesus rose from the dead and we are witnesses. And he has, he has peace of life and sharing the peace with you. So dear brothers and sisters, I invite you personally today to 
come into the divine mercy of God. Sometimes people think about all the mess they have done in the past and they think like, I was too late and I don't think I belong here. I don't think I can go back to the worship. I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I'm worthy. All kinds of things. You know what? God is merciful. He wants you here. Thomas said, I want to see. I want to put my hands. You know what Jesus said? Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, but have believed. Guess what? You and I have the privilege. We do not live in the time of Jesus, but you and I have listened to the word of God. We have continued to embrace this Catholicism and the faith that we have believed and we gather together faithfully every Sunday, every time we get an opportunity because we believe in Christ's soul. We are so proud of our faith that has been transferred to us, passed on to us. So we need to celebrate and rejoice the faith that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, and He lives among us. May the peace of Christ live in you. Whatever you're going through today, whatever it is, allow the Spirit of God, allow the risen Spirit of Christ to be with you. And listen to the words of Jesus saying, Do not be afraid. Receive the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid. Receive the Holy Spirit. I'm going to make you a witness. Wow. That's powerful. Do you know how many times the Bible says, Do not be afraid? 350 times. 350 three times a day. It means every single day. God is telling us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And you and I freak out for everything. That's why today, as we receive the peace, what we need to do? Trust. That's one of the things that we're going to pray in a few minutes. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. The peace that Jesus shared with us makes us strong. Trust Him as they did with the disciples. And you and I are called to imitate God who can make us strong, who can empower us, who can enlighten us, who can continue to inspire us and make us all follow the living God, the living God, the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, all things. Mercy in our workplace, schools, and other communities, 
We pray to the Lord. For the evening of all in the Eastern mysteries, for all gathered here, we pray to the Lord. For the soul of Alicia Renaga, who was killed at Stack High School earlier this week, for her parents, and the safety of all students and teachers in all schools, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our St. Bernadette's discipleship community, we pray to the Lord. Merciful God, we offer these prayers to you through the intercession of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Today we have a second collection for the whole mission. Please be generous. Father, 
Accept, O Lord, we pray in your name and by baptism. May we attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us adjust our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of the law to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the priest or our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together. The unending him of your glory as they have claimed. In a similar way, when supper was entered into the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Bless and approve the intentions of all your children gathered here, and all those who join us through online. May they continue to be empowered by the wisdom, Christ, love, and mercy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, Saint Bernadette, our patron us, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I have a couple of announcements. We have been praying and discerning for God's will as we began a new ministry for the single, the divorced, and widow. And we're going to do our first uh, meeting on the 1st of May after the 12 p.m. Mass. So we're going to start with wine and cheese. How about that? So if you know somebody who is single, uh, divorced, or widowed, please uh, join us for this beautiful ministry so that we can grow together and spiritually enrich each other that we haven't forgotten you you are not alone we are here to show that christ loves you in this time of um, you know uh, uh, difficult situation and the event committee is hosting a dinner uh, during this time may 14 at 6 30 pm after the saturday mass and um, if you're interested, please call the office and reserve your seat. We only uh, sell tickets for two weeks. So please hurry. A few weeks we have been talking about Family Promise. Family Promise is the mission that supports local families facing homelessness. So along with the, uh, the national and also local San Joaquin County, and we are stepping up, partnering, along with all the churches to help people to get back on track, especially families with children. We are also uh, participating. Some of you already signed up. We need more volunteers. And I got mad at Costa at the vestibule. You can stop by and ask a question or register your name or to be a volunteer. We need it today because uh, we're going to start the first day of May 29th, for which you need to go through a training because you're going to face people and other things that you need to do. And the Zoom class will be on May 10th. So please stop by at the, at the um, you know, vestibule uh, for this um, uh, uh, beautiful ministry of helping the families uh, in this time in our, in our city. Now, we're going to begin the chapter on the Divine Mercy. This is something very special. I would love for you to stay and pray. This is taking only like 14 minutes. And so I would love to offer this because Pope Francis offered uh, a beautiful uh, plenary indulgence for those who participate in the Divine Mercy Chaplet because you already participated in the Mass. You asked for forgiveness and you have received the Lord. And so you are all set. The only thing that you need to do is to have good confession and also to uh, participate in the chapter of the Divine Mercy to complete the entire plenary indulgence. This indulgence you can use it for yourself, for the forgiveness, or you can use it for somebody that you're thinking about that needs to come closer to the mercy of God. That's the whole purpose of this, especially for the dying. If you know anybody who is still who is diagnosed with cancer or any other illness, bring them to the altar of God. And you will see the prayer that we're going to pray and it's very powerful that mercy of God may touch it, you and your family member. So please, let's kneel and prepare for this celebration of the ordination.
John the Lonely Prayer. He expired when the, the sword of life got forth the soul. And the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. The fountain of life on the back of the divine mercy. And let the whole world and a fear of God upon us. O God and Father, who touch forth from the heart of Jesus as the song of mercy for us. O oh, God and Father, who touch forth from the heart of Jesus as the song of mercy for us. O oh, God and Father, who touch forth from the heart of Jesus as the song of mercy for us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Lord is with thee. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered the conscious fire, was crucified by the Holy Spirit, descended into hell, the third day was released from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, who was the Holy Spirit, and the living of the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Forgive us of sin, the resurrection of our body, life everlasting. Amen. In God and Father, I offer you the body and blood, so that we will in thee, of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord. That promise for us is and knows of the whole for the sake of his sorrowful passion.
to actually train the Lightroom software as you can see how beautiful, how empowering and consoling. That's how God continues to help us. So I'm so grateful for all of you and for the choir and everybody made this day possible. May God bless us all. Let's go in peace and stand and sing of the final hymn. Thank you.